This is the Content and AI Podcast, episode number 22. Most of the news coverage and social media conversations around AI and content feel urgent and important. This is serious business, but you can have fun with this technology too. Mike Atherton has done content work at places like the BBC and Facebook, and he still does proper content design in his day job. Newsbang, his daily AI-produced satirical news show, has given him both an outlet for his inner comedian and a venue in which to hone important new work skills. Welcome to the Content and AI Podcast, where experts on artificial intelligence share their wisdom with the content community. Our mission is to demystify and democratize AI to make its principles and practices accessible to all content practitioners. And now here's your host, Larry Swanson. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode number 22 of the Content and AI podcast. I am really delighted today to welcome to the show Mike Atherton. Mike, you might know Mike. He's probably best known as the author. Well, he's best known for a lot of things. But uh, His work at the BBC and a lot of other interesting stuff he's done. Uh, he co-wrote the book uh, Designing Connected Content with Kerry Hain, uh, which a lot of people in my world appreciate. But he now he's now a content designer and creative technologist based in the UK. Um, welcome, Mike. Tell the folks a little bit more about what you're up to these days. Well, hey, Larry. Thanks for having me on. It's great to be back. Uh, yeah, I'm um, a UX writer and content designer by day. I kind of work with various um, product teams in, in uh, different kind of companies to uh, write everything um, from the microcopy, you know, the words on the buttons through to taxonomy and control vocabulary and all the good stuff that uh, we UX writers like to do. Um and uh, you know, as part of that, I've I've for the last few years I've been uh, dabbling with these uh, wicked AI tools that have come our way, um, and uh, you know, seeing what I could do with them to try and uh, make them you know generate content in a particular voice and tone or in a particular way. Uh, to fit in with a brand voice or a, or a product voice, and that's really got me interested in you know the styles of writing and the styles of content that uh, models can generate if you give them the right push. Yeah. And that, well, that's why I want, I mean, I'm always looking for an excuse to talk to you, but the, the most recently last uh, in December, you, you launched this site, this news site um, called Newsbang, which is entirely AI generated. Um, and it's uh, what's the, I mean, there's a number of taglines I've heard in it, but one of them, um, is a taste of truth served with a side of satire. And it seems like there's a lot of, but anyhow, there's always to what you were just saying that, well, there's so much about this project I want to ask you about. But one of the first things is there's a distinctive tone to it throughout. There's like a bunch of different personalities in there, a bunch of different topics covered, um, but you know you're listening to news bang. So maybe, is that a good place to start? Like with the-, uh, the, yeah, the Absolutely. I mean, my- the characters are perhaps the, the my, my favorite part of it. Um, so, so Newsbang for the un, Uninitiated is a daily news podcast, um, very much modeled around a kind of nightly news bulletin, um, but in the kind of silly way that you might find in uh, Saturday Night Live's Weekend Update or old sketch shows like Not the Nine O'Clock News or particularly my favorite one, um, The Day Today, which was a BBC comedy show uh, that just turned 30 years old this 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 year. Um, and a lot of these shows, you know, they they kind of take, um, the, the, the joke is the kind of bombastic self-important reportage, if you like. Um, and that happens through, uh, on our show, through, through different archetypes that, you know, one might emulate a 1980s BBC science presenter. And the other with like a kind of hard hitting investigative journalist and another with a kind of, you know, self-satisfied middle-aged sports presenter. Um, and uh, and each of, you know, together that that gives the, the show a kind of ensemble uh, sketch comedy vibe, um, which it was, was really sort of what, what I was going for um, and influenced, I think, a lot by these kind of... Um, News parodies, I say those the, the shows I mentioned previously, but what if they were actually a real show and had to sustain their length and had to really go out every day like the like the news does? 
-hmm. Yeah, and the and, and the setup of it is like you just said. It's like it it, it sort of has these uh, conventions around it. And when you if you just listened to it and weren't really paying attention, you would think it was just some. You 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 to the extent you were paying attention, you'd get that it's a parody site. But just the the tone, the flow, the structure, everything about it evokes that. Um, how did that come together? Because like we were talking before we went on just a little bit about like you said nowadays, like if you can imagine it, you can do it, you know, with, with AI. And so you imagine this, talk me, talk me through the steps from that imagining it and the first episode. Well, sure. I mean, like many men of a certain age, I, I, I started to fancy having a podcast. Um, I even bought this big stupid microphone. Uh, but never kind of really got around to doing, kind of put that away. And then I was getting into AI, which was the, my latest, like, all-consuming uh, uh, hobby. Um, and through that, I, I, I found a, 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 a now abandoned project, sadly, called Crowdcast. It was a, it was a GitHub Python script um, where it would sort of take a feed of Reddit posts um, turn them into sort of chatty podcast segments and then send them to the Eleven Labs API to turn it into kind of text to speech. And I thought, oh, this is kind of interesting. You know, this sort of scratches that podcast itch, but with the, you know, with the added bonus of not actually having to talk to anyone or do anything. Um, uh, so, um, so I started to kind of play around with it. Now, I mean, you know, six months ago six, seven months ago when this started, you know, I, I was in no way any kind of developer. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't make head or tail of Python or what have you. But about the same time, um, ChatGPT uh, or GPT-4 came out um, and ChatGPT was running the kind of full fat GPT-4. Um, and it was fantastic for as a, as a kind of coding co-pilot um, to be able to kind of make sense of these scripts that I found and didn't really understand and get them running. And, you know, whenever I have an, uh, an error message, I could paste that into ChatGPT and it would debug the error. Uh, and then through a lot of, you know, baby steps and trial and error, I managed to get um, a prototype together. Uh, and that's a prototype. It was, it was called Relationships on Reddit, and it, it's it's not. Don't look for it. It's not there anymore because um, it was. It's kind of embarrassing now. But um, I basically, you know, I I, I cloned uh, a voice, uh, a celebrity voice, Stephen Fry, and I was pulling in um, uh, red, you know, real, actual live Reddit posts from a from a subreddit, and then editorial. You know, it would it would generate. Um, like a sort of agony out segment, if you will, agony out show about these these problems in the of Stephen Fry. And I ran that for about three days. And, you know, I'd go and I'd listen to it in the morning and and try and figure out, you know, am I even interested in this? Is this content sort of worth hearing? And it was on day three that I realized that there was a bug in my code that was stopping the Reddit events from passing through to the LLM. Um, and so it was happily making up its own stories that, you know, unbeknownst to me. And that was a, that was a really kind of strange feeling that, you know, a bug in code rather than uh, rather than just crashing the script, crashing the computer would, would, would fail in less noticeable ways. Um, and um, so, yeah, so I, I it's. It also sort of brought me to my senses a bit, and 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 I realized that deep faking a kind of celebrity voice, offering artificial advice to real people's problems, was was not okay at all. Um, uh, but it did sort of, I don't know, it kind of it gave me that aha moment that you could basically turn code into a piece of media. Um, you know, with with kind of no intervention, re recording steps, you know, no uh, editing steps or or anything really. You know, end to end, you can you could run a script or a set of scripts um, that would take information from some external data feed, and at the other end, spit out an MP3 of a of a, of a radio show. I mean, what a time to be alive! <laughs> That's and is it? It's you make that sound very simple, but. And it probably is quite doable and, and, and easy nowadays. Like you said, with ChatGPT, can you can you just walk me through your tech stack of that? Like, how deep down yeah. are you training the model with these Python scripts, or is this for prompt generation? Or <clears throat> sure. Well, 
So, so for, first, what happens is that the um, uh, uh, I take a daily feed of uh, on this day in history events from the Wikipedia API, and uh, that gets uh, parsed and turned into um, kind of the, the the germ of the story that the that the report is going to be about, um, and through a bit of um, not well through the spacey library which uses gpt 3.5 i think um i can assign them automatically to the uh best characters based on their kind of thematic content um so you know there's so we have characters for uh crime and ones for sort of natural disasters and ones for sports ones for um environment you know that kind of thing one for for business and in fact the characters are sort of designed around the type of events that come in the feed um so that there's always something um and one of the, one of the one of the earliest findings i had was actually most on this day feeds are just bad news. I mean, it's all it's wars, it's murders, it's you know air disasters, it's all that kind of thing. So there, I also needed a way of kind of ranking them so that there would be a bit of variety in the in the content. So the stories are then passed on to um, a series of prompts. So each character has their own system prompt, has their own kind of few shot chat history. Um, to uh, to do that kind of few shot uh, training as such on uh, on each request, um, and that gives it um, you know gives gives each response its own particular flavor, um, and uh, the characters are admittedly a bit you know they're they're kind of reliably one note if you like in that they you know whatever the story that that their take on it will be in their consistent style. Yeah, um, I wanted to ask you. Let me ask you about the characters real quick because the the new the the this, the team the news team that you've employed is um it's I mean did you make up the names or did Chat GPT make up the names? <laughs> <laughs> because here I'm just going to rattle off a few of them: Smithsonian Moss, Brian Bastable, Ken Shit, Hardiman Pesto, Calamity Prenderville. These are like they're kind. Anyhow, tell me a little bit about that. Uh, th I think, you know, there's a certain like prosody that I'm going for in some of those uh, in some of those names that they kind of fit that slightly elevated style. Um, it's a silly name convention, it, it, you know, very much rooted in those in those sketch shows like the day to day or brass eye or radioactive where people kind of have silly self-important names, because a lot of the comedy actually comes not from jokes per se in the traditional sense, but from that kind of dissonance between the seriousness of the structure and the material and the way it is, in which it's presented. Um, so it's, it's, so you, so, so any excuse for an extra little bit of comedy through a funny name or something, I'll, I'll totally go for. And, and to your question, I mean, some of them were in fact were generated by the model. Um, and it's often all I can do to tamp it down, to stop it creating new characters in the responses. Mm -hmm. Well, how much work is that? Like, how frequently do you have to intervene in your scripts <clears throat> and fine tune things? Yeah, well, it's less and less so. I mean, in, in the beginning, um, uh, I, I mean, essentially, it kind of runs on a on an infinite retry, which is my terrible coding, but. Um, uh, you know, in the beginning, would it it would fail a lot. I'm looking for kind of you know complete responses, which are fairly reliable in the open AI models, but not so much in the more interesting kind of open source models. Um, uh, so once the kind of complete script is generated, I do them a, a day in hand, so a day ahead of transmission, and uh, and I will be the kind of the the human moderator, if you like, to make sure that it's not gone too bad. Um, but uh, I, yeah, a lot of it is just fiddling with the prompts and particularly the kind of the model parameters um, to try and get that that tone and a mixture of a good, a very solid system prompt um, with the few shot examples and with the you know the right model settings. You kind of that it, it sort of. Uh, it, it creates the character, if you like. Um, mm -hmm. And as a, as a point of principle, I've been uh, 
encouraging the model to go where it wants to go and not sort of being too um, uh, prescriptive about what I think, who I think these characters should be. Uh, and that's been really interesting. Like, you know, Ken Shipp, the, um, the hard hitting investigative journalist who is really just, you know, set up to be that kind of one note, like, you know, the good guys are good and the bad guys are bad. And that's uh, and very kind of binary about it, but actually turns out to be weirdly kind of weirdly for the character, sort of very progressive and very kind of empathetic. Uh, and that gave the comedy like a, a, an edge that I had never intended, um, uh, but was, you know, what wonderfully surprised about. And the same is true of the voices as well, like the actual, um, you know, the, the, the text to speech voices that that really like the combination of the content and the and the audio uh, gives the character that the, brings them to life, you know. Yeah, they, they definitely have distinct personalities. And some of them are kind of evocative, like Brian Bastable reminds me of David Sedaris somehow. And um, oh, okay. and, and the one, what's her name? Smithsonian Moss has that. Well, she just kind of has like the Gen Z slang going yeah. on. And, well, and, that's, yeah. yeah. So a lot, a lot of them are basically, are, are, are rooted in voices that I, that just kind of run around my head that I remember from TV growing up that I hear like, you know, a lot of the kind of po-faced, like late night ASMR YouTube video essay voice, you know, that kind of sounds like a, you know, midnight caller type show. Um, uh, so there's a bit of that. There's a bit of like BBC Radio 2 and those kind of very comforting voices. And I wanted there to be like a real variety um, that, you know, the, the, the characters sort of interchange per, from episode to episode. But it, uh, together they, you have, a, there's a, it creates a certain kind of audio canvas of, of different voice timbres and, uh, and rhythms, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that goes back. That, that seems to me like just good old fashioned content strategy. You know, you did a lot of work to develop a voice and tone and style. And and uh, and, and so you you immediately recognize the any one episode for what it is. Um, but there's you know, it's, it's executed uniquely. And each character, you know, kind of adapts to, to the to um, the to the uh, to their surroundings. Um, how so how extensive are your descriptions of these? Um, these personas, these personalities, the newscasts that you have, uh, how how much did you have to tell the the machine about this for it to do uh, to create these characters? Uh, I mean, lots is the short answer, and my, that's why my prompts are very expensive. Um, but that's been quite a, quite galvanizing and get, getting those prompts more token efficient. Um, so generally, the, I will be telling the, the model to act as a persona. Um, I'll give them through a what I like to think is a kind of chain of thought process, um, a, 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 a chain of, of skills that they should be good at to sort of prime the pump of the model, really, and get it kind of thinking in the right area of whether it's investigative journalism or whether it's, you know, um, uh, uh, TV sports reporting or whether it's the kind of uh, satire of like American Barbara Winters type stuff, which we also do. And um, uh, and then, you know, that gives them that gives the model some context. It, it, you know, it, you I also in, incorporate kind of uh, vocal ticks, whether they speak with a, a you know, a seriousness, whether how they finish their sentences, whether it goes to sort of bathos um and uh you know and things like that and and um and then you know the 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 uh the chat history for each character it basically um feeds them an event um and then writes what you know their model response for uh, for that event and and so the combination of those tends to push the model in the right direction Got it. And so you you have sort of the, the chat history. You're, you're kind of building the voice of the of each persona over time. You have the, that daily event draw from Wikipedia. Um, and then is this is this sort of like augmenting? Like, um, are you using like the OpenAI um, API or some other large language model? Or uh, every model I can get my hands on. So the OpenAI models are great, and that's how I started. Um, uh, and yeah, the first few runs. You know, even even before any of the text to speech, the just the first few runs of generating the transcript. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, costs around two dollars or so every time I ran the script, and that 
was a, got got quite expensive quite quickly while I was debugging. And also the the open AI models, while fairly good at following instructions, they're just not funny. Um, and their you know their alignment is such that they uh, they won't have any kind of bite to the comedy. Really, it will be very gentle, and uh, and that's if it'll even choose to do it at all. Um, so that led me to other models like the ones from Mistral. Mistral Medium I'm using a lot at the moment. That's really good. Um, and one, and other ones like Goliath and, um, uh, some of the news Hermes, uh, models, um, uh, which are kind of llama based or in the case of Mistral, its own thing. Um, and they will, you know, when it comes to the comedy, they will totally go there. Uh, so the challenge then to becomes to kind of balance that creativity with kind of reining it in with enough guardrails to prevent it, you know, it doing anything too bad. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, I, 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 and, it, I, and I think also what makes this, well, I, I conceitedly say what makes the show work, but I think what I like about it is that it, it does keep mixing up the style of the comedy. Um, from more gentle to more kind of hard hitting or, you know, more, more guttural. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's actually, you know, through a judicious choice of the models for each character. Um, yeah, and those guardrails you just mentioned, because a lot of the content comes out, it, you can tell it's, I, that's kind of why I ask, because you can kind of tell it's not open AI, because the big commercial um, LLMs, they're tasked with putting pretty firm guardrails up, but the open source models are more um, forgiving. Um, and so what are the, how do you build your own guardrails, I guess? How do you keep it like in a, like a, if not family friendly, at least family safe uh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think partly, I mean, that that's come for me in the prompting so far. Um, uh, I mean, I'll get on to, you know, better ways to do that. But I think, you know, I just in the just in the prompting to 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 tell it to, you know, not be racist or offensive. And um, and, you know, the, the, the ways in which that you would like it to act, you can kind of be, you know, you can be you should be uncensored. So it, it can it can swear if it wants to, but it can't sort of start to make like it can't sort of tar target individuals in a in a way that doesn't seem fair. Um, but I, also, I think this um, for my use case, there's there's a certain installation um, of it being this kind of silly, not to be taken seriously sketch show essentially. Um, so it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm somewhat insulated against the hallucination of facts where we're, we're not saying that this is in any way, you know, real news, even though it kind of is. Um, uh, but also, you know, the, there's the, the, these are characters. I mean, they're not real people. And so they, they you know, they speak in the um, top way that those characters do. And the humor, ideally or intentionally, should come from their presentation like not the, you know the topics of the stories are not the butt of the joke mm -hmm. yeah no and it's you're, it seems pretty adept at that like because it'll like any large language it's, it seems like it's trained with a whole bunch of stuff so it can for example there was that one story about the first um it could be the, like the equivalent of the supreme court in australia the first woman to you pointed to that somehow that newscaster worked in every Australian stereotype like Vegemite and, and and Barbies and all that stuff, um, but without but in this way that's both obvious to the that it's part of the show, but in a way that you knew, it was widely informed, but it, you could feel the guardrails like that it could easily have gone off the rails. It seemed like yeah yeah totally and it, and it, and there is an art to it and sometimes it's trial and error and sometimes it 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 does go wrong and sometimes making you know those kind of generalizations against one nationality is more okay than doing it against another nationality and that sort of starts to feel where you maybe need the hand of a of a human to just make sure that things are okay um and uh, yeah i mean i have i i i i i wrestle with a lot of that at the time because i think the the whole show um and it's and it's wonderful though we're discussing it you know as though it's a, a real show <laughs> yeah. um uh but it, it kind of 
it sort of has a throwback vibe to it itself. It's the, it's I think it, it models itself on things that are, are not how media exists today, but you know how it maybe it did some 20, 30 years ago. Um, and so, yeah, there's something about that that contextualizes it. I, I like to think, plus the fact that you know, um, uh, you know, tragedy plus time is comedy. So I think the fact that these are historic events rather than contemporary contemporary events gives it some room for um, editorializing. No, it's true. You feel that in the the. Um... The, because it, it reminds me like when I was a kid you, you hear like you see an old World War II movies or 40s radio shows or something it's got kind of that um, right. retro vibe to it hey Mike let me ask you this you've been doing this for a while now and you but you're you come out of like a lot of us just out of good old content strategy information architecture chops um, how for folks who are would like to like play around to the extent that you have can you give me a feel for like how much time did it take to get like halfway decent at Python and, and, and figuring out which LLM to use and that kind of skill set. Like how big a lift is this for somebody who's, um, uh, you know, not yet quite technical? I mean, I, honestly, I, I started this last summer, not, not, not knowing anything. I mean, I suppose having a rough idea of how something might be conceptually pieced together um, the what would become the tech stack, if you like, but not in any you know way that I could, code that um but i think having the having the very strong uh having a very strong vision of what i wanted to achieve um or at least strong enough to you know to pull me in that direction um allowed me to kind of focus my um interactions with the lmm uh with in, in this case chat gpt where i was writing a lot of the python code um and yeah, you, so I could ask it quite focused questions, which I think it's better at. Um, if you say, you know, you give it a list of requirements of like, this is what I need to be able to do. I need to be able to fetch events from here. I need to be able to assign them to a character. That character needs to have their own sort of model settings. And then eventually we need to send it to a text-to-speech thing. And then eventually we need to publish it. Um, and that just with, with that sort of picture in my head, really, I was able to do each little bit you know bit by bit um and uh, treat them as mini projects with um you know I, I worked on how to get those you know get those events from wikipedia and you know turn them into something that the model could use um given that often there isn't enough uh, you know uh, events themselves don't have a wikipedia page so there's a bit of jiggery pokery to make that work um and then, yeah, I mean, then and then getting those the the, the different models and and get and then and and because I had the use case of the different characters to get into the into playing around with with different model settings. Um, anyone who's got a uh, OpenAI account could do can try that in the playground, um, and uh, start to play around with temperature and and top P and frequency penalty and stuff and see how that. Affects the eye. I mean, it affects the output more drastically than prompting often. Um, Interesting. Uh, those kind of things like temperature. That's just a variable in a script that you're changing. Or yeah, totally, yeah. Yeah, totally. totally. So, so now I, there's num numbers in my scripts I can move to make it funnier, which is a which is a really strange <laughs> thing. Every uh, every comedian's dream. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. No, that's great. Um, well, I think that shows too the way you just even just the way you described yours is a relatively modest media enterprise, but the way you just described it all reminds me of the ubiquity of AI in everything we do now. Like when you're writing the Python scripts, you go to Chat GPT yes. because they've got it, they they are the ones that can tell you how to do that. But when you want to have a little more freedom, you download your own LLM and and do that. Um are you how does this manifest? We haven't even talked at all about your real day job, but does this manifest in your day job like that? Are you do you feel more facile and and uh, quicker at using uh, AI tooling in your in your day job? Yeah, I I, I think so. It's um, yeah, I, I like I mean, like I guess a lot of people now, it's 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 so quick to um, use ChatGPT to uh, or any of the models really to um, you know to throw out a quick idea or I you know to I've got a draft of something that I want to. Um, see just redrafted in other ways not necessarily to use as is but just to kind of unblock me and you know think of things um uh you know think of different ways to say and express an idea 
So I think it's, you know, it's a certainly a very useful like utility for that. Um, uh, but as I say, like right now, my day job is a lot of it is, um, is about kind of getting microcopy done in product teams. Um, and I'm already seeing that um, disruption, you know, what was what used to be kind of lorem ipsum in Figma files is giving way to chat GPT generated um, placeholder content from, from product managers and stuff. Um, but I think, I think, I think if AI is going to be more, uh, more useful in that kind of microcopy space, you got to take more of a systemic approach, you know, and, and I think that's, you, you, you're trying to keep a content design system uh, held together with its specifications and, you know, voice and situational voice and tone and component level guidance, if you like, ele elemental guidance. Um, and for, I think for, for AI to, to properly be able to, to use that and, and act as a kind of interactive content design system, we've got to get them a bit better at following instructions reliably than some of the methods I've seen at the moment. So like the GPT, uh, custom GPTs, the assistance API that OpenAI are trying out at the moment. It's, it's all right. It's not fully baked yet, I think. And, um, you know, you, you certainly, I, I, while it would be fine for me as a human in the loop to sort of start generating content like that and use myself as the, uh, to assess whether it's good enough, um, it's not quite at the level yet um, where we can sort of do that unaided. Uh, it may not be long, but let's see. Yeah, well, they are learning models, so if they, yeah, if they yeah, learn yeah, everything yeah. you just said, yeah. yeah. I mean, and honestly, it should be better than it is for you know essentially structured content. Um, but um, doing that through prompting means is can be uh, unreliable at best. Yeah, yeah. Right. Hey, Mike, I can't believe it. we're coming up close to time already. I, I literally could talk to you all day about this. But um, before we wrap up today, is there anything last you want to uh, re revisit from the conversation or just make sure that we share before we wrap up? Um, I, only that, you know, if I, as someone who couldn't do this six months ago, can can do something like this, I, you know, I'd love to see a lot more of it. There's um, there's amazing explosions happening in the AI art and AI video space. Um, but conceptually producing genre content is something that is very, very close to my heart. Uh, and uh, I, I just, you know, I just love to, 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 um, to see more of that from, from, from other people. Um, if you're if you're getting started, if you just use ChatGPT so far, then I say get into the playground and uh, start messing around with model settings. And then if you're getting feeling even braver, and maybe you're not on your work computer, then um, you know services like Open Router or Poll uh, can let you play around with non-open AI models, and you can sort of see see the difference that you can that you can get with them. Not saying one's better than the other. Um, but there is more, you know, more variety available. Great. I'll put those uh, resources in the show notes as well. Um, right. Oh, hey, one very last thing, Mike. Um, what's the best way for folks to connect if they want to follow you online or connect online? Well, I would encourage everyone to go to newsbang.podbean.com. I haven't quite shelled out for my own domain yet, um, but uh, that's the best way to subscribe to Newsbang. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, if you want to talk to me about Newsbang, um, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, I see it for yourself or listen for yourself and see if everything we've been saying is true. And better yet, build your own Newsbang too. Oh, Belgium, yeah, absolutely, better yet. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much, Mike. Always fun to talk. Thanks so much, Larry. For show notes and to sign up for our newsletter, visit our website at contentandai.com. And please rate and review us on your favorite podcast platform. Thanks for listening.